Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today as Baxter Travel Media presents the Responsible Travel and Tourism Forum's Innovation Award winner, Green Key Global. As you may be aware, the Responsible Travel and Tourism Forum honors those Canadian businesses or groups that have made a substantial impact on the Canadian travel and tourism scene, specifically regarding sustainable travel in the Canadian market. So with us today we have uh, the Innovation Award winner, Green Key Global, and its Director of Business Development, Steve Ball. He'll be presenting and we are very excited to have him with us today. Once again, should you have any questions for Mr. Ball, a, a short question and answer period will follow his presentation. If you have any questions for him during the presentation, please feel free to write those in the question and answer box located on the top left-hand side of your screen under the Have a Question button. And with that and no further ado, we would like to uh, invite Mr. Ball to take the floor. Uh, Steve, whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, everyone. Noon, everyone. This is uh, Steve Ball calling her uh, talking about the, uh, the Green Key program with our uh, great host, Tabitha, and the uh, Baxter Travel webcast. I'd just like to start off by um, thanking everyone today, and obviously the great opportunity that we presented as, as award winners. Would uh, love to showcase our program, and thank you again for the opportunity and the uh, opportunity to, I guess, obviously to uh, receive this great award as well. Uh, I'll start off just going through some a brief overview of our programs, talking about some of the different initiatives we do, talking about the ROI of our program and how best to uh, look at that and be able to justify that to the people that uh, make those decisions, talking about some of the partnerships that we do, and then talking a little bit about the RFP process and things like that. It should take about uh, half an hour or so. Happy to answer any questions, and my contact information will be at the end of the webinar. So as I just mentioned, the overview here, we'll just talk about the introduction, financial returns, the ROI, the Green Key program itself, what our members should expect and some of the resources that they can take advantage of, the RFP process, and some of the partnerships that we have in place, both to uh, showcase our members and to work with some of the leading partners within the industry. I'd just like to start off with this. I mean, to lay the groundwork, I know there are a number of hotels on the webinar today, but there's also some other uh, people from a variety of different um, uh, organizations and different uh, economic uh, 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 sectors. So I, I like to start off with this as far as sustainability is an increasing scene as a prominent factor in hospitality decision making. The key challenge faced by the industry in 2015 will be the adoption of existing asset base which will be ex expensive and disruptive. I think we're all aware that there's not too many new hotels being built in many big cities. Quite often they're being renovated and, uh, and updated other than the uh, typical uh, hotel that would be uh, new build. A lot of times they're trying to update and renovate existing properties. Obviously there's lots of regulatory and economic uh, pressure from stakeholders to uh, ensure that the building is being profitable but at the same time sustainable. And at the last point here, I think we can all agree that mo excuse me, more and more uh, travelers are uh, looking for opportunities and are expecting that uh, uh, the, the, the organization or the property that they're staying with and the venue that they're meeting at are certainly uh, going through different initiatives to ensure that they're being sustainable and reducing their footprint. I found this study quite interesting. I've just recently found this uh, consumer sustainability purchasing considerations. I kind of compared the three. Uh, India to the right actually had the highest uh, we'll consider more in the next 12 months. So you can quickly see here that things are changing. I and mean, if you look at 72% of purchases here in India, I think they um, uh, polled over 15,000 people uh, internationally. Uh, certainly sustainability is becoming at the forefront. Canada is kind of in the middle there at 46. And unfortunately, the uh, UK uh, was still in the starting point and uh, lower of the many of the companies and sorry, uh, countries that were uh, talked about in the study. The darker they're considering sustainability performance and then actively looking for information. You can see a lot of those percentages are drastically growing within different organizations. Hopefully we in North America can drive that last little one here, actively looking for information as uh, we uh, look at different initiatives like Green Key and other organizations that are kind of leading in this field. 
So the question always comes up, whether you're on the purchasing side or you're whether you're on the supplier side like myself, why certified? I, uh, according to the world uh, WTO, ecotourism is the fastest growing market segment in the tourism growing at a rate of 5% worldwide and representing 11% of all consumer spending. Now, if we think about that, that's 10%. That's a significant amount of the spend that people are coming. They're expecting these things. As a not-for-profit, more than two-thirds of the U.S. and Australia travelers and 90% of British tourists consider active protection of the environment and support of local charities to be part of the hotel's responsibility. So our guests staying in our facilities are expecting pretty overwhelmingly that we have a number of these things in place. So it's no longer getting started at this point is the expectation are that you're actively as a facility going out of your way and putting these procedures in place to lower your footprint and be as sustainable as possible. So why does it matter? Why do we want to go through the effort of being certified? I think like any certification in the world, the first step is to try to find a credible one. The second thing it does is it creates credibility. Any third party Accreditation lets the world know that you are credibly committed to environmental responsible business, as well as the Green Key program, obviously, it's environmentally focused. There are a number of other programs out there that do a great job within their perspective um, uh, segment of the industry. Green Key has obviously been doing this for quite a long time and have enjoyed a, a great support of many of the hotel brands and industry as we move forward. So what is the ROI? I have included a couple of slides. Like anything in life, we do have to justify why we're purchasing things. I think that argument is becoming a lot easier. There are a number of great studies come out. There are a number of great success stories. Uh, we as an organization have a whole slew of these and a nice library of different success stories, an opportunity to share amongst our members if people are looking for that information. There's two studies that I really uh, enjoyed uh, reading through last year. One is put out by the Cornell uh, University. I think we're all familiar with that institution. Uh, and they had, this was kind of like a subpar outside of this, the, uh, the study that they were doing. They found that eco-certified hotels are more resource efficient. So essentially going through the process of any certification has made those properties more efficient. Ideally, we at Green Key would like you to choose the Green Key program, but simply going through that effort will start highlighting the different areas of consideration and concern. Some places are doing great in some areas. Some areas want to have more attention. The next one here is the U.S. General Service Administration finds that green buildings cost 25 percent less to operate. I think we all know whether we're in the hotel industry or in a separate uh, corporate industry, the operational costs next to labor are typically the two highest things. So being able to reduce those by 25% is a pretty big number and certainly tries to dry, drive a lot of attention toward that. Just a couple of quotes there, cost 19% less to maintain, 25% less for energy and water, and 25% sorry, 27% higher occupancy satisfaction. So we're not only talking about the maintenance and the reduction of energy costs, we're also talking about the people that are using these facilities and buildings and how much happier they are within a green facility. I just recently saw a study come out this morning that uh, said uh, teachers or sorry, students that are in greener facilities actually become better learners. Now, I'm not sure how they qualified that, but certainly interesting that uh, even all the way down to the school system now are looking at different uh, efforts and initiatives to become more sustainable. I've put in this ROI uh, as number one here. I've given a couple of different examples. It's uh, the Brown Palace here in Vancouver. They're one of our members and been quite successful in our program. They went about the effort of trying to improve their waste diversion. So a typical hotel, independent hotel, but uh, still wanting to uh, look at that as a means to one, reduce, and then second, uh, save on uh, the cost as well. So the Hotel Sustainability Committee committed to a comprehensive waste diversion program in three main areas. The collection of recyclables, collection of electronic waste, and the donation of unused guest amenities to local charities. They developed a training program and delivered to staff in each department and provided to managers as well as to recruits. After one year, the host diversion rate increased from 20 to 27% and was cost neutral. 
So think about small steps. So they haven't necessarily reinvented the game of getting rid of waste. They've just taken a much more proactive approach, started to measure what's happening, put together a training program, and then looked at ways to further that effort. Their next phase of that facility is their organic waste collection and composting and projected to save another $1,300 a month with a one-year payback. Now, $1,300 a month isn't necessarily a large sum of money, but if you time that over 12 months, over a number of years, you all of a sudden see a number of great savings, a few of these small initiatives compiled onto each other, and there can be quite a significant saving for an individual facility. The ROI number two here, this is on a much bigger scale. The 2010 um, AIDS conference here in Vienna, sorry, in uh, Austria, organized by International AIDS Society, there's just some pretty big numbers. So by so they have 19,000 participants. So you go from a small hotel all the way up to a large venue doing this on a regular basis. Now this is one event being held at a conference facility in Austria. So you ask $15,000 by not printing invitation programs. I'm assuming they did some type of email and, uh, and, and web campaign. $18,000 by not printing general information booklets. I think we're all familiar with the different apps that we get to download at each uh, conference. Now, as someone that attends lots of them, quite often these are compile up, but still a great tool to be able to reduce that uh, paper. A US 20,000 by printing abstract booklets only upon order. $500,000 by not providing shuttle buses. And what they did was offer a discount on public travel. That's a significant savings. And obviously the uh, associated uh, footprint that would be from all the different shuttle buses. People are obviously still using transportation, but they're using the existing infrastructure, not creating a new one. And then $50,000 for not having to buy water for delegates using tap water. You can see that number at the bottom. These are some pretty straightforward steps, but that's a significant savings over the operational cost from one year to the next. So as far as uh, benefits of the program, so now we can talk about, we've talked a little bit about the ROI, we've talked about some great studies and how we know that the general public is starting to look more and more into the sustainable field and the expectations that come along with it. Whether you're a planner, whether you're an organizer, on the purchasing side, I think you're going to be looking for a third-party verification. This allows you, as a, as a purchaser of a hotel room or meeting space, that you've got someone validating the efforts of the facility. Obviously, the associated uh, 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 cost savings, equaling healthier environment for your guests as well. The public image that you're allowed to um, to showcase, whether that be pre, post, or, or uh, during the event. Customer satisfaction, we know through numerous studies, is substantially higher at venues that are more sustainable. Public relations, it ultimately gives you some different content to tell the story. It's quite successful when you can say not only did we reduce our footprint, we also reduced $600,000 from our operating budget. And then lastly, the content to tell the story. This gives them a, a baseline. It's important in any effort that we track the effort, and they've obviously done this year over year and are really seeing some considerable savings. Now, benefits to the facility on the flip side. I think we know that lower operational costs is the number one driver here. We're all in the business of, unfortunately, not unfortunately, I guess, we're all in the business of, of, of making money and supporting our different facilities. But at the same time, if we can do that, not obviously jeopardize guest satisfaction, but lower operational costs, it's a win-win for everyone. Marketing and RFP opportunities, marketing the tools allow you to separate yourself from other facilities in your media area or different cities when you're vying through RFP processes. I will talk a little bit about more RFP, uh, the RFP process later in the presentation, but it's certainly becoming a really important part in order to showcase your venue because these questions are coming up more and more. Increased staff and client engagement. It's a great opportunity to increase your staff and have them get on board. The Westin here in Ottawa is a real success story within both of our Green Key and Green Key meeting programs. And the staff, uh, typically, when someone leaves from the Green Team, it's the most sought after position uh, in the hotel. Client engagement is another great way that content to tell the story to separate yourself, whether it's communicating at check in welcome letters, being able to assist them with their meetings, being able to assist them to lower their impact, all those small initiatives. Emailing a checkout notice is, is, is a nice little touch. Not only we all have expense reports, but being able to have that in your inbox when you get back to the office is a nice touch as opposed to having to run down to the front desk to get a printed copy. 
and then ultimately a reduced environmental impact. So what is Green Key Global and how about did we get started? These next few slides will go through a bit of the history, a bit of an overview about the two programs that we have to offer and kind of what to expect as a member, whether new or existing. So this is a little bit hard to see, but it really gives a timeline of how long we've been doing this. Since the uh, late 90s, the Green Key program was created by the Hotel Association of Canada as a means to create uh, promote sustainability within the industry. It was an external program, and we have since brought it internal through the early 2000s. You can see in 2008 there, we reached 1,000 hotels. In 2009, we reached, uh, started launching it in the U.S. 2010, Fairmont and a number of other hotel brands picked it up as their kind of third-party outside audit of their efforts. Everyone can say they're green, but being able to have an organization like Green Key come in and audit those efforts really put some... Um, validness in your different efforts. Uh, 2011, uh, Green Key Meeting was launched in partnership with uh, the MPI Foundation here in Canada. In 2012, we launched our carbon calculator. And then uh, in 2014, we've done a number of updates. We've, done, we've updated our website. We have a whole slew of new marketing and uh, templates to help our existing uh, members go through that effort. And then a new communication strategy, whether that be through uh, email, Facebook, LinkedIn, or our, our newsletter. And in 2015, if anyone isn't familiar with the GSTC as the Global Sustainable Tourism Council, they've become the kind of the certifiers of the certifiers. So we've gone through the process of having that as well and will be another uh, member benefit of someone enrolling in the Green Key program. So what is Green Key? Green Key itself is a graduated rating system designed to recognize a wide range of lodging facilities for their commitment in improving environmental and fiscal performance. The Green Key Meeting Program, as I mentioned earlier, was developed in partnership with MPI. We revised that program in July of 2014. So with the revision of that program, it was originally devised as a program to promote sustainability within the meeting portions of larger hotels. When we revised the program, we had a couple of convention centers sitting on our panel, and they said if you had uh, the opportunity to get rid of the hotel specific verbiage, it would be a great opportunity for different meeting venues, whether it be a golf course, wedding chapel, uh, even a church or up to a convention center, they have an affordable option to try to go about third party verified certification. So that initiative, and that's kind of the big change, and, and we're really excited about that opportunity. Um, a portion of each of the membership does go back to the, the, the foundation. The Green Key and Green Key meeting programs are both third party verified. It's a great tool when you're looking at a meeting planner, potentially looking for different venues that you want to host your meetings at. It gives some real credibility to those efforts. And as I mentioned earlier, an advantage in the RFP process. So the current numbers, the Green Key program, over 17 years, and we're celebrating over 2,000 hotel members. The Green Key meeting program at this point has 175 venues. Now that's a whole collection of convention centers, uh, golf courses, uh, hoteliers and things like that. Now the blueprint itself, both of the programs are based off of online assessments to start that process. Uh, the Green Key program has 160 questions split into five sections and then the Green Key meeting program has 107. We've highlighted the different sections within the Green Key meeting program here. Core areas, communication, activities, health, transmission and audiovisual. With both of the Green Key and the Green Key meeting programs, you can opt out of programs or the sections that aren't relevant. So if you're doing the Green Key program and you're a limited service property, you can opt out of the meeting and the food and beverage sections and your overall score will not be impacted. The same thing with the Green Key meeting program, the exhibit space and the audio visual typically are third party um, organized and third party suppliers. You can opt out of those and will not affect your overall score.
So the scoring methodology, this sometimes can be really straightforward for people and other people are really confused by it. So as you're completing the, either one of the assessments, it's based on a percentage basis. Now because each section has a variety of different questions and different numbers, we can't say 100% whether you're going to you know, get this score or that score. What we typically suggest is when people are going through the two programs, they complete the assessment and they establish a baseline. Whatever that be, a three key, four key or five key, in most cases, the, the, the bigger percentage is threes and then fours, and then we have a small percentage of five key uh, properties that are really um, kind of hitting a home run when it comes to their sustainability efforts and the, the policies and procedures at their, at their venue. So as I see here, it is, it is a percentage base. So when someone comes to me and says, how do I get from a three to a four? We look at their performance report, we highlight some different tasks and initiatives that they can take on at their facility, and then we reopen the assessment and they have an opportunity to do that at any point. So the member resources. Now you become a member, you've gone through the assessment, now you can you can take advantage of these resources before you actually complete the assessment. A lot of people find them helpful, specifically independent properties that don't always have the resources that uh, might be available from the different branded uh, facilities. The performance report is another great tool as well. So once you're completed the assessment, you can see the third page over there will highlight the five sections within Green Key and provide you a percentage uh, based on how you've completed those questions in the assessment. What it does is it highlights your strengths, talk about what you're doing really well, and then also um, will highlight the areas of improvement and give you tips and recommendations on where to find those resources and how to get more information about the different um, segments, policies, trainings, all of those different pieces. The marketing resources. This becomes a good one and it's certainly a hot topic and it's typically a hot topic of late because we've heard a lot of different initiatives. Quite often we have members that will go through the trouble of, of uh, not the trouble, go through the program of Green Key. They pull all of the tools and resources together. They've talked with their different departments. They get their Green Key rating and then they sit on it. They don't promote it. They don't talk about it in their RFPs. They don't talk about it in their welcome letters. They don't talk about it on their websites or any of their marketing material. So what we've gone about is, is we have a number of these resources to make this easy, this process as uh, pretty straightforward and easy as possible. There's a variety of program logos depending on where you've scored. These will all be relevant to your rating. Uh, program certificates that can be posted or shared uh, with the uh, different RFP processes. Email signatures are another great way to communicate your rating and how successful you've been. Uh, news release templates. This is something that not too many people take advantage of. Why not share the fact that you're in the program and you've, got a, you've, you've done all the hard work to get the results you have? We can also share different news releases, whether you're planting a tree or you're running a food drive or you're engaging locally to do a cleanup at a, at a lake or along a, along a beach. These are all different things that we're happy to share and, of course, included in your membership. And lastly, the access to our affiliate listing. I'll touch on this in a little bit, but another great resource to really showcase our members. The membership resources themselves, I touched on them briefly. We have a number of toolkits, departmental checklists, case study library. All of these tools are put together in place to, in order to make that process of becoming more sustainable and increasing the number of initiatives at each facility that much easier. The creating an environmental policy might pre seem pretty straightforward for a branded hotel or even a management facility, but having these different things in place allow you to develop these policies. The action plan is a really important one. Not only are you going through the effort of being sustainable, you have an action plan of existing projects and then um, efforts and plans to put uh, further initiatives in place. Letters to suppliers are another big one. Quite often many facilities have existing agreements in place. This toolkit would allow you to draft those policies so when these procedures are coming into play that it gives you a great opportunity to communicate with your suppliers find out what they're doing and maybe suggest different initiatives such as taking the cardboard back when they pick up and when they drop off new things. You can imagine if if uh, simply by a, a food supplier like Cisco, if they were to pick up all the cardboard they dropped off every week, the operational costs on getting rid of it at the facility side would drastically reduce. I'm not saying that every organization would go for these types of things, but it's certainly an opportunity to start looking at where you're spending money and really creative ways on how to reduce those those efforts. Sustainability for the hotel contracts, that's also with your visiting uh, clientele's. 
whether that be in a facility, whether that be a corporate event, or whether that be in a corporate building itself. There's always opportunities to lay out how you would like your facility to be used in a constructive way to, in order so everyone's on a pl level playing field, and then you're actively reducing your footprint. The departmental checklists are a great tool to ensure that each of your departments are staying active and not losing that kind of green effort. You've gone through the assessment, everyone's keen, everyone's green, the green, te green team is firing. This is, another, this is a great tool to be able to hand out, say, on a monthly basis to ensure your different departments are also ensuring that, um, that you uh, have these resources at hand and you're moving forward in the same direction. The case study library is once again a free tool. It is another toolkit you can take advantage of. This becomes some great information when you're looking for marketing materials to talk about your facility. This is a template. You basically cut and paste your text and your pictures into it, and then it's a great tool. We also will take that information and share it with our members and promote on our end as well. Communication, we kind of attach this from different angles. The green scene is our bi-monthly newsletter. The blog is something that we've tried to proactively do at least once a month. Best practices, industry leaders, complimentary downloads, social media channels, obviously your traditional Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and then back to our affiliate listing again. This slide is just mean to kind of highlight all of the different people that we share and organizations that we share our membership with. So we've, we, we take on this opportunity because we think it's a great chance and a great opportunity to really showcase who our members are with these world-class organizations. Now, what we don't list are the number of hotel associations, accommodation directories, tourism organizations. This list is quite extensive. In Canada, the public works is a big one. Quite often, uh, it's, it's mandatory for government uh, travel to be done at a green facility. Green Key is the mechanism that these facilities use to be able to showcase their property as a green facility. Uh, AAA, CA, CVEN, Expedia, I think all of you are familiar with a number of these brands. They're shared on a monthly basis, and they're used to update their hotel inventory and mark them as a green uh, property. On-site verification, we've talked about it and touched on it briefly throughout the presentation. I think it's, we can all agree it's essential the credibility of the program and is an on-site verification audit. We come to the facility, we audit the facility. It's not meant to be something that everyone should be scared of or, or, or fearful of. It's a means to validate the information that you've completed. In the Green Key program, if you've checked yes to any of the 160 questions, you may be required during that audit to be able to reproduce that information. Do you have a board where you communicate your green activities to your staff? Yes. Do you have an environmental policy? Yes. These are all quite straightforward, easy things to be able to reproduce. And annually, a minimum of 20% of our members are selected, much the same as a CA or a, or a AAA does not audit every single hotel each year. We do the same thing. It's a means to create some real structure and the credibility within the program. And it is included in the yearly fee. There is no additional charge for the audit process. And typically, you're given about a two-week window before our auditors come on site. The RFP process. I've, I've added this because it's become more and more important over the last number of years. For anyone that's not familiar with the Global Business Traveler uh, Traveling Association, they've created and gone about creating an RFP process over the last number of years, and it's become quite popular in the corporate hotel buying uh, side of things. They use this as a resource, and uh, they've included about 20 new questions strictly around sustainability. So if you're a venue or if you're a hotel and you don't or do not have the ability to answer these questions, obviously you're not in the same place that some of your competitors are in your surrounding area or different cities. So in recent years, environmental social sustainability issues have been moving further and further into mainstream. We've discussed it. We've talked about the ROI. We've talked about how our clients are looking for this information. This will allow buyers to become aware of the environmental impact of their purchases and for suppliers to outline the work they have done in reducing the impact of their operations. So partnerships. Partnerships is something that we hold to a great regard and, and we want to spend a lot of time and energy in ensuring that we are connecting, we are spreading uh, information about our programs. MPI has been a great partner since 2011. They came to us to look for an ability to showcase meeting spaces within the hotel industry and as mentioned earlier in 2014 we did revise our program and have since now have the, uh, the International Foundation involved uh, 
and are, are part of their affinity program, which is a means to promote their affinity, uh, their um, different programs within the foundation. And a portion of each of the Green Key meeting registration does go to that uh, endowment uh, education fund as well. And just a quick quote there, I think it's pretty straightforward from Tony. The MPI Foundation is pleased to have Green Key Global as a partner and contributor with the MPI affinity program. The next one here is Clean the World. Now, this is a new effort uh, on both of our parts. We, we quite often are in very similar circles, speaking at a lot of the same conferences. So it was devised, you know, why don't we come together and start working a little bit closer together? In many cases, we're talking to the same facilities. I think uh, we can all agree, uh, you know, it, it's a pretty straightforward partnership and a great opportunity for both of us to, uh, to make a real impact in the industry. Green Key Global is pleased to announce a new partnership with Clean the World Canada, an initiative that collects, recycles, and discards soap and bottled amenities from the hotel industry. Anyone that is not familiar with Clean the World, they've been in the space now for about three or four years and are working as predominantly in Canada and the U.S., sending the soap products from, or the unused soap products from hotels to uh, different parts of the world, whether it be local charities here or in uh, different venues uh, and in uh, places around the world. Uh, more than 35 million tons of soap, shampoo, and other amenities have been diverted from traditional dis soap, um, disposal messes since 2009. For the Canadian hotel properties, uh, this will be a nice little savings. They're working with a new partner in Quebec, so that'll help to reduce the cost of shipping the soap products, which I know has been a hurdle for some people in the past. And then I think in the coming months, you'll also see a similar uh, relationship with uh, Clean the World uh, USA and then on into Europe. And the last one here, uh, La Table du Chef is another great organization. Typically food waste is another one that a lot of facilities struggle with, whether you're a meeting facility or a hotel uh, or a restaurant in general. Uh, La Table du Chef is an organization out of Quebec. It puts a little different uh, spin on it. I think we've all learned and, and, and talked about different food recycling programs. Their initiative is to provide the facility with the containers to actually freeze the uh, leftovers from an event. So no longer are you dealing with a hot and a cold. These, this organization, I think, has simplified the process. Let's just freeze it on site, and they come by at a weekly time and pick it up. It's all prearranged. Obviously, lots of coordination with the event and the facility. And I think, if I remember right, it's a small pickup fee of $50. So pretty much a no-brainer. It's really straightforward. They've taken all the guesswork out. On the facility side, you know, instead of scooping it into the garbage or a composting bin, you're going to scoop it into some uh, reusable containers. And then obviously uh, I'm putting together some uh, space within the freezer to hold this on a weekly basis. But a great initiative. I think everyone on the hotel or venue side, facility side, should be involved and happy to make that connection as we uh, move forward. Our mission, uh, to become an active, valuable partner to our members, to improve the reputation and bottom line of our members, and ultimately to earn recognition as a leading lodging and meeting eco-certification brand in the industry. Having the awards that we have done here and with the uh, this great opportunity certainly is, is an ex another excellent opportunity to showcase, uh, showcase our hard work, all the different initiatives and the time and dedication that we put into really making this a top-notch program and then marketing our members to the uh, different organizations that are looking for it. Just a last thought here. Consumers hold businesses directly accountable for their quality of life and demand leadership from brands to overcome the most pressing human and planetary challenges. This is a clear signal to our companies that we can't wait for consumer demand to drive our actions. People expect businesses to take the lead. So thank you all for taking the time today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit and I didn't cover the information too quickly that you were able to comprehend a little bit. The next slide here will be an opportunity if you would like to get in contact with me directly, feel free. We're always happy to share the information. We're always happy to share our resources and look forward to, uh, to future conversations. Thank you again for the time. Fantastic. And at this point, we would like to thank Steve Ball, the Director of Business Development for Green Key Global, for joining us today. And we would like to invite everyone, should you have any questions, please feel free to write those in the question and answer box on the top left-hand side of your screen. And a uh, moderator will direct those to Mr. Ball as they arrive. Once again, we would like to thank you for joining us all today. And uh, we look forward to having Mr. Ball speak to us uh, a little bit further in the future, hopefully. 
And once again, if you do have any questions, the question and answer box is located on the top left-hand side of your screen, and we are taking questions now. All right. Well, it seems as though everybody has uh, really benefited from the informative presentation. So at this point, I would, oh, we do have a question. Fantastic. So Anonymous would like to know, can you provide your own thoughts on the benefit of Clean the World for a resort 250 rooms plus where the cost is so high? Steve? Um, it is a struggle. I, I think ultimately the cost is offset by, by getting, by no longer having to uh, recycle and get rid of the unused um, um, product. I, I think that one, it becomes a marketing piece. Quite often, many venues will then talk about whether in their RFP processes or general communication um, at the hotel what they're actually giving back uh, and what they're avoiding from putting into the the waste stream. I think that as hopefully if, if you're on the Canadian side with our new um, with their new development in Quebec that cost will reduce slightly I think so you've got one you've got the collection two you've got the waste diversion and three you have a different content to tell the story I think it nowadays it's it's unfortunately an expense line and I think if you look at what the savings is on the waste side that should be pretty much neutral um, 250 rooms operated at, you know, 80%, percent so lucky 60% average occupancy. So you're looking at about 180 rooms. Um, that's at least a pound or two a day uh, of unused uh, stuff. And it doesn't take long to quickly add that up. And the associated uh, savings, I think, are quite, are quite drastic. Thank you for that. And we do have two questions in a similar vein. Uh, Ms. Uh, Benson Wong would like to know, can you share this PowerPoint with us? And Paul Sazawak, uh, would, and I really hope I pronounced that one correctly, uh, can we get a copy of today's presentation? I will uh, take a moment to advise everybody that we do have this presentation recorded currently. And all recorded webinars are available on the Baxter Travel Media webcast YouTube page. So if you'd like to revisit it or if you have a question that, you, uh, that you'd that you like to just touch base on, we will be providing that link shortly after the presentation once we're done editing. Um, and Steve, if you are comfortable sharing the PowerPoint, please feel free to let us know. 100%. I, I spent a lot of time doing these types of presentations. Um, typically, they're customized. I tried to make this one a little bit more general because I wasn't sure exactly of the audience. Um, but always, I mean, we, we, I spent a lot of my days doing webinars for a number of hotel brands and management companies, uh, whether they're new, whether existing, or just looking for a refresher and, and sometimes just ma maximizing um, the program itself when, when they do have full enrollment. Um, we've done a number of those. I think Delta quickly jumps to mind where they have, you know, all of their hotels are enrolled in both programs. But sometimes, you know, a couple of times a year, just need a bit of a refresh for, refresher and re-engagement. And I'm always happy to, uh, to help um, with that initiative as well. Okay, Ideally, yeah. sorry, just one, one last point. Mm -hmm. The program is as flexible as you want it to be. We want to be able to provide our, our tools and resources in a real collective and positive way. So if we have members that are looking for specific things, we always want to provide those. Um, as, as user friendly as possible with the ultimate goal of, of increasing their sustainable efforts. Fantastic. Well, if there are no further questions, then we would like to thank you all for joining us today and extend a very large congratulations to Green Key Global, the RTTF Innovation Award winners. And we'd like to thank uh, Mr. Steve Ball, the Director for Business Development for Green Key Global for joining us today. Once again, uh, this webinar will be available on the Baxter Travel Media YouTube page if you'd like to revisit it. And uh, we thank you all for joining us and hope you have a great weekend. Thank you, everyone.